Hello everyone, welcome to my review of the uh, Gallon 6 foot 3 standing punch bag. And that's literally the punch bag. You can see it's quite tall. I'm a 5 foot 9 and this is a 6 foot, so it's a taller than me. Right, so when you receive the package, it's come with the two puzzles. Right, so let me just take this off. Right, so it's come with the one with this top part of the uh, punch bag and that's the only thing in that puzzle another one come with the base right so if you look at the base you can see there's got a screws on it so the top part is a separate so when you receive it it's come with the, like here uh, right so that's everything in the bag but obviously they got more more than this right so this is like a suction cup and they're acting as the feet on the bottom so if you've got like a wooden floor or any kind of solid floor, you probably want to put this on, but because I'm doing another carpet, so I don't need it. And also it's coming, got a little spanner. So that's coming in the package as well, for, for the screw on. So once you assemble everything, if I just turn this around, you can see that's got a, a cap on here. So you can fill up either sand or water. In this case, I fill up the water, okay? And the good thing is for this kind of shape of the base is if you want to move it, because you don't want to lift it up, it's really heavy. So all you have to do is just, it's still quite heavy, tip it over, and then you can roll it to anywhere you want it. And you can see, there's no leaking from the cup, okay? So this is really handy if you want to move the punch back to somewhere. Right, just let me put it down again. Okay. Right. So uh, I didn't fill up the water yet. I mean, you got probably like uh, three fourths of the water in there. So it wasn't completely filled up, but I think it's heavy enough for me. So uh, yeah. And uh, if you put a sand in, I would say it's definitely really, really heavy. Okay, let's just put these things on the side. Right, so we're gonna do some demonstration. Let's put the bag together. All right, so all you have to do after you assemble the base, just slide the top part in. And be careful, the top part is quite heavy as well. There we go. And uh, right, if you come and close, have a look at these stitches on the bag. Just come over. And you can see the stitches is all double stitch on the top. And on the side, it looks really, right, it looks really good quality on the side as well. Okay. So this bag, I think it should be last quite a long time. I can take some uh, heavy punches. Right, so now we're gonna demonstrate like how the wrist bumps in the bag are gonna have it when you punch it or kick it. Um, right, that's another thing I wanna say because this is really heavy bag okay and it's really fill up the hand ST form so before it pumps to the bag I recommend you use a glove and hand wrap otherwise you're probably gonna you know injure your knuckles right just let me put the glove on right so we're gonna do really simple jab and a cross and uh, you can see how much the bag swings. And uh, just one second, right? So as you can see, the bag swings a little bit, but the base stays solid. So uh, it's not like a sun bag that swings a lot. And uh, you got a little bit of movement, but I think that's good enough. And it, actually, you know, that's the kind of a bag you're looking for. So you got a little bit of swing, but not too much. And also, if you want to do not only the boxing, because if you want to do put, keep got boxing or Muay Thai, any kind of a training like this, as you can see, the bottom part of the bag is just literally by same level on my knees. So the good thing is about this, you can practice a lot of kick out here. So some of the bag, they kind of. Uh, um, not that long enough, I don't know if that's the correct word. So uh, 
some of back you can see is about that high. So you can do punches, you can do run kick, but you just can't do the low kick because they've got nothing on bottom. But this one, you can easily do low kick if you want to. And you can see, I still stays quite well when you get the low kick on it. Right. So every time you kick, you can notice the base is moving slightly, okay? But I think that happens on every kind of a freestanding bag. So it doesn't matter what kind of a brown or different bag you get. It. So we get it kicked. Well, when the bag gets kicked, obviously, it moves slightly, okay? So that's why you got this suction cup come with the bag. But because I put on the car pads, and uh, at the beginning, I didn't put suction cup on, it just everything come off after a few kicks, so not worth it. Right, so that's the lock kick. Let's do some uh, round kick. Right, as you can see, this is a quite powerful kick. And the bag still stays okay. So, I'm not gonna tip it over or something like this. Right, so, uh, at the only time, I can tip the bag over is when I do the front kick because I don't have a space to demonstrate it here, right? So, but when I do the front kick, the bag tips over like this, yeah. But it did it came back, so it's not gonna fall down. But it's just you're gonna lift the base up, yeah, and come back. So that's movement when you do really powerful front kick. So I think overall, and also that's another handy thing. So you gotta tag it on the bag. One, two, three, four. So. Well, I say, if you want to do the punches or whatever, are you arming normally? When I do the punches, I'm arming between one and two. So that's kind of uh, the height I want to go when I throw the punch or jab. And if you want to do the kick, low kick, obviously, I'm um, at four. So that's kind of the same height as your sight, kind of where you want to arm at. And uh, we do the right house kick, obviously, between two and the three. That's where you're arming at. So uh, I'll give you the indication of where you want to punch or kick. And that's another good thing about the bag. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's everything about the bags, actually. And uh, yeah, guys, please do remember, because this is really, really, really hard as they form are here. Yeah, it's really solid. So please do wear wearing gloves. Otherwise, you might injure your yourself. And so, uh, yeah, actually, I think for the price, because you can get it from Amazon or eBay for around 90 pounds. I think I paid it for 89.99, something like this. Um, it's really good price for the freestanding bag for that height, okay? And you can, at the beginning when I buy this one, I was looking for something like uh, the full body freestanding bag, okay? That, that was the two things about it. First, it's cost probably twice more. You're looking for at least 200 pounds for the full body one, okay? Another thing is, you cannot take it apart, okay? So once it stays like this, we should assemble the bag and the bag stays like this. So it's not easy for you to move it around because uh, at the beginning I was thinking to put it outside, but because of the weather condition for the time of the year, it's not uh, really capable to just leave it outside. So I put it indoor, but when the summer comes, always gonna leave it outside, right? So every day after the training, I just take the head off, right? And I, I can just inside somewhere to hide it and at this one I just cover it up because you don't want to leave this one just outside in the rain or something like this because you got like, these screws in there so you don't want to get rust so in my opinion this bag is really good and worth every penny you spend so if I do I mean have some uh, um, advice I would say to Gollum uh, properly, first the thing I will say, you know, if the bag, if the base can come with like a cover, something like this, so a lot of people want to leave it outside. You can put this one indoor, but you don't want to move this one because it's really heavy, especially after you fit it up in the sand. So if you come with a cover or something like this, you can just cover it up and then you can leave it outdoor all the time. Right guys, so thank you very much for watching. See you later. Bye.